Hey everyone, it's Chris here. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about my latest gear purchase, a Dyneema Composite Fabric Food Bag. So I've been doing a lot of research over the last year or so and reading up on Dyneema Composite Fabric or DCF and the benefits of using this seemingly magical material in backpacking and hiking. You may be familiar with DCF already, but for those of you who aren't, here's a quick summary of what DCF is and how it's made its way into the backpacking and hiking market over the last few years. So DCF is made from a thin sheet of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or UHMWPE or as it's commonly known, Dyneema. And that's laminated between two sheets of polyester film. DCF was originally being used a lot in sailing to produce sails and that was due to two of its key properties which are its high tensile strength and it's extremely lightweight. So it's these properties, along with a number of others that I'll talk about shortly, that has seen DCF become more widely used in other applications, including now being used to make pieces of outdoor gear. So what are the key properties of Dyneema composite fabric that make it such a useful material in the production of hiking and backpacking gear? The first property is its weight. It's an extremely lightweight material and that's allowing it to be used to make things like tents and packs that are going to be a fraction of the weight for other similar pieces of gear that are made from more traditional fabrics used in outdoor gear like ripstop nylon. So that's the first thing about it. The second thing about DCF is its strength or what they call its tensile strength, which basically means how much weight it can actually take from being stretched or put under pressure. DCF has an incredibly high strength to weight ratio. So being very lightweight, but incredibly strong. And it's actually rated as the strongest fiber in the world. The third property of DCF is that it is completely waterproof. So it sheds water completely and doesn't absorb any moisture. There are other lightweight materials like Kevlar, for example, which is a very lightweight material, but does actually still have a small rate of absorption of moisture. DCF, on the other hand, is completely waterproof and doesn't actually absorb any moisture at all. The fourth property about DCF is that it has incredibly good durability. So it can be used for a long period of time, you know, being crushed and crumpled and folded and it'll still maintain its structural integrity over a long period of time so that makes it really attractive for outdoor gear where you know you're constantly shoving these things into packs or you know when it's being made for packs that are being bumped up against trees and rocks and all that sort of stuff that's a really important quality of it and the final property about dcf is that it is very uv resistant in a country like Australia, where we've got some of the most extreme UV levels in the world, this is just going to help the gear last longer, even when it's getting exposed to UV over long periods of time. DCF at the moment is not a widely used fabric in the production of outdoor gear. In the US, it's currently being used mainly by smaller cottage companies like Z-Pax and Hyperlite Mountain Gear. These are small companies that were actually started by hikers who were doing long distance trails like the Pacific Crest Trail, the Appalachian Trail, and wanted to produce gear for themselves initially that was going to be lighter to carry over long distances. So these smaller companies are specifically making gear for hikers that want to have ultralight setups to do long distance hikes and making sure that their weight is minimized so that they're going to be as comfortable as possible over long distances. 
In Australia, the availability of DCF products still seems to be almost non-existent right now, but it has started to make its way into Australia, into small specialty stores like Ultralight Hiker, which is an online store with its headquarters based here in Melbourne and is actually where I purchased this food bag from. One of the main reasons it's still not used as a mainstream fabric for the production of outdoor gear is the cost of it. The simple fact is Dyneema is an expensive fabric and that means that the raw materials going into the production of gear is high and so that then translates of course to high prices for gear made from DCF. I'm hoping that does change over time as it becomes a more widely used material and perhaps the cost of that material actually comes down. So we start to see this become more of a mainstream fabric that's used for making outdoor gear. So now that I've talked about Dyneema composite fabric and what it is, let me talk specifically about the food bag that I've bought. I bought this bag to replace the one that I've currently been using up to now, which is this Exped dry bag. And look, this has been a fantastic bag as well. I've had no issues with it. It's been out in the rain and kept everything dry and it's been really tough. So I had no issues with that. The main reason for purchasing the DCF bag and trying it out was definitely not about weight. These two bags are basically pretty much the same weight at 34 grams. So it wasn't a weight saving exercise. This was really more about being able to get my hands on a piece of DCF gear and test it out to see how it actually performs when I'm out on hikes. I wanted to do that with a smaller piece of gear to begin with, just to sort of see how that goes before I considered looking at things like larger ticket items like a tent or a pack that's actually made from DCF and seeing how this performs first. It's a pretty straightforward bag. It's, it's just a normal dry bag like uh, others that you find. So it's got the roll top design. So basically the two studs at the top just to close that off. Roll top and then the buckle would actually just locks that off. Now this one's actually about a 13 litre bag, I believe. Uh, and the, the reason I bought this particular size was to be able to ideally store about up to seven days worth of food in it. So I only just got this a few weeks ago and I haven't actually taken it out on any hikes yet, but I will definitely be taking this out on the next ones that I do. So I haven't had a chance to just sort of test out what it's like yet. However, what I did manage to do is take advantage recently of a, a rare rainy summer's day that we had and I decided to just test out its waterproof qualities. So I took some items of clothing and put them into the bag, took the bag outside and left it out in the rain for a few hours, brought it back in and just to see how it actually performed, did it keep my clothes in there dry and yeah it worked really well there was wasn't any moisture that had come into the bag at all so it was pretty happy with how that first little test went now because I'm going to be using this bag for food I'm going to be stringing it up in trees a lot at night so basically to keep it away from animals that are trying to get to your food and this is particularly so at campsites that are well used where Animals like possums and mice and even wombats are pretty much patrolling the campsites at night to try and search out people's food. I rarely, if ever, keep food in my tent at night. So because I'm gonna be stringing up this bag at night, I need to know that it's gonna be, obviously, be able to stand up to rain if it's a wet night. And also that if somehow animals do somehow get to it that it's going to stand up pretty well to that if they happen to be able to get to the bag while it is strung up so i'm pretty excited about starting to put this thing through its paces and seeing how dcf performs in practice so i'm definitely using this as a test bed for looking at other pieces of dcf gear in the future like potentially a tent or a pack and those sort of items in that case will definitely be about looking to reduce the overall weight of my gear setup. So you'll see this being used out on the next upcoming hikes throughout this year. And once I've put some 
more serious mileage on this, on some of those other hikes, I'll probably do a bit of a review on how it's actually performed over that time. So are you using any DCF gear at the moment? And if you are, what's your experience been like with it so far? And if not, are you thinking about adding any bits of DCF gear into your setup? Leave a comment down below. And if you got anything out of this video, hit the like button. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button. And to get notified of any new videos coming out, hit the little bell symbol. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you guys out on the trail next time.